Welcome. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Good Nurse Outlet, a podcast discussing things nursing, healthcare, and everyday matters as well. Honestly, the topics are endless. I'm your host, Nurse Naj. Let's get into it. I really don't know what's going on with my audio, but we're going to make it happen. Is it focusing? I am getting frustrated. Trying out a new lens. Hey, you guys, welcome to the Good Nurse Outlet podcast. I am your host, Naja, author of Chart Like a Boss, a documentation guide for nurses. How you guys been? Today is Tuesday, and I'm recording on the Tuesday, which I'm going to release, which is super crazy because I really need to do better. Like, I was supposed to do this on Sunday, but I literally was doing so many events for my church, and then I had to do a, some other stuff yesterday, so I really need to figure out how to connect with people on Spotify because Spotify is really giving me numbers and for that i appreciate you thank you for everyone watching on youtube and listening and on apple podcast last week's video was so awesome i had my friend sylvia jean my hair it was so much fun the reviews for that video was amazing so thank you everybody that watched it and subscribed you can also follow me on instagram and tiktok nurse.nod the other day i was looking at my tiktok and my likes are not adding up i know i got like a few hundred thousand likes but it's only at like 24 but anyway that was just my sidebar. My friend Janaya, she said, girl, okay, scenery is giving big comfy couch. And I love it because honestly, it really is. You know, 2024, we are just doing life a lot easier. We have not signed up for the trial and tribulations package this year. Nothing but glory is coming our way. The promises of God are going to be fulfilled. We are going to be obedient and diligent. We are on season two, episode three. Today's topic is nurses check your orders what is happening why aren't the girlies checking their orders what is going on you work on a unit where they're doing multi-disciplinary rounds then you need to be checking your orders like ugh. anytime you always need to be checking your orders honestly i really hope it's focusing is it let me fix it. that looks a little better nurses check your orders if you're working on a unit and you have to do rounds it is very important i keep looking at this thing because baby if this comes out crooked i'm gonna fight somebody <laughs> Because there might be a delay. So I might look blurry on my end. And then if I get up, I'm going to get out of focus. So we're not about to do that. Before we dive into today's topic, I just want to share a testimony with you guys. Follow me on social media. Then maybe you've seen it. And if you follow me and you haven't seen it, that's perfect because I'm going to tell it anyways. But the example that I use on social media is the coffee shop. So there was something that happened where I was working at the coffee shop. I was volunteering. I do a lot of things. So volunteering is not like abnormal. However, at this time, I was volunteering at this coffee shop and there was this cashier. And this cashier, oh my gosh, like, you know, you're supposed to love your neighbor, but this cashier was making it very hard for me to love my neighbor. Instead of going to say something to her, confront her, whatever the case was, or even a gossip about her, be passive aggressive, like the person was being, I just went into prayer. I was like, Lord, just help me love my neighbor. Help me to just be kinder and nicer to her because we have to be together for eight hours during this time at the coffee shop. So, like, I don't want a bunch of conflict. Now, granted, I'm very cool, calm, collective. Like, if you act crazy to me, I'm just going to be like, the enemy is using you <laughs> because I don't have time for it. She was always acting, you know, just different. We'll say different. I was praying that God would give me grace. I was praying for her. I was praying for her, like, mental state because you never know what someone's going through. The next week, I ended up running into her again at the coffee shop. I ended up going out, and I received a pamphlet, and I was like, wow, this is a great pamphlet. I grabbed an extra one, and I actually gave it to her the next time I saw her at the coffee shop. So she really liked it. Coming to last week, we were at the coffee shop. I don't know. Like, there was just this shift, you know? We ended up talking, laughing, joking, and then I went on break, a little 15-minute coffee break, and she decided to go on break, too, at the same time. I'm just telling her my testimony about how jesus healed me don't worry i'll tell you guys another time and she was just telling me her testimony how it was pretty similar to mine which was like amazing and then i was just talking to her i was just being kind you know just saying nice things i didn't really know what was going on with her as i'm talking to her she starts prophesying and when i tell you i thought this woman was crazy <laughs> I remember in my prayer, I said, Lord, help me love her because the fruits of the spirit, it's not given. It's not given fruits. And I was not judging her before y'all say anything. This is my quiet time with the Lord. So him and I can talk about anything I want to. But yeah, I was like, Lord, the fruits ain't fruit. And y'all peace, love, kindness. It wasn't given. <laughs> but when she started prophesying, I literally almost passed out because I could not believe it. So this happened on a Friday. On Wednesday morning, I was praying to God about something. And on Friday, he spoke she allowed God to use her 
said, give me the message. It was amazing. And I was like, wow, you're really gifted. What? She prophesied for about eight minutes. Like, of course, it was in and out. We were having conversation and God would speak through her. It was just amazing because literally what I was like, God, you say I'm going to do this, but how am I going to do this? Like, I don't understand, but I'm going to trust you. And then she said, this is how you're going to do it. These are the steps you're going to take. This is what's going to happen. This is what's over your life. This is. And I was just like, because I've heard these exact words. And then I don't want to tell it because I want people out there, fake prophesying to people. And there's something that. There's a telltale sign to know when it's really God. She turned completely different from how she normally looked. And then not only that, the tone was different. The action she did, it could only be God. Like the way she moved, only God could do that. What else did she do? Another way you could tell if a word is from God is because it has to line up with scripture. So like if they saying something, but you ain't never read that in the Bible or you haven't seen that in a verse or anything like that, It ain't real prophetic word, but I knew this was prophetic word. And I just was like talking to her and I'm just like, yo, what? God gifted you with the gift of knowledge and you don't use it? Because she started telling me about how, I don't even know how to say it without putting her business out, child. There was a time where God used her. In that moment, she allowed God to use her. And then there was an elder around that was like, who are you? Who do you think you are? And ever since then, she said, I don't I don't normally do it. And I was like, well, girl, I'm happy you did it today. <laughs> After that, like, I prayed for her because, you know, if God gives you a gift, he's not going to take it away. But it's just like, there's so many people you'd be help, you could be helping. But anyways, that was my little tad bit story. I hope it was short. The lessons in that was just like, you know, don't go talking about people. You never know what someone's going through. You never know what they've been through. The best thing to do is pray for someone. Initially, when I was like starting my Christian journey, pastors, ministers, people would say, oh, just pray for them. I would always be like, pray for them. What? But now I know there is so much power in prayer. Before I used to be like, no, I need real tools. But baby, Lord, forgive me because praying for someone is a real tool. So today's topic, nurses check your order. Let me tell you guys a story. It is your responsibility as a nurse to check your orders. Don't think, oh, I didn't get that in report. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, I never saw that. Don't think those things because you're going to be held accountable for that. I've given this example many times before and I'll give it again. When I come in on shift and I'm getting report, you best believe not only am I checking the patient, checking the room, checking the IVs that's hanging, checking if there's urinal full, if there is a pure wick full, hazardous things around, fall risk things, the bed alarm is on. Baby, when I'm done, I'm going back and I'm checking orders. I vary between, you know, of course we always do bedside, but I vary between like checking orders first and then going bedside or I might go bedside and check your orders later. The benefits of checking the orders first, you get your assignment and then you check the orders because you can already tell, okay, this patient is a sugar check, so I need to ask what the sugar was okay, this patient is on restraints. I need to know when the restraints are renewed. Okay, this patient has a Foley, but I didn't see an order for it. <laughs> the doctors, this story is crazy. Now, I was get, I was endorsing reports to the night nurse, and my report is perfect. So I was endorsing reports to the night nurse, and the doctors were documenting. It was a busy day. I had like nine patients, I think. It was crazy. And the doctors were documenting Foley catheter intact in place. The nurses was documenting it. And I got a report that the patient was on a Foley. We went to rounds. They said the patient was on a Foley. It was on the board. Y'all, there was no order for this, for this Foley. I guess it was a verbal and everyone was just under the impression <laughs> that it was an order. But sometimes things like that happen. I'm laughing because the way the night nurse came to me, she was like, okay, but where's the order? And I'm like, she's like, is there an order for the Foley? And I'm like, of course there's an order for the Foley. Who am I? Me? Miss Charlie like a boss? Miss Nasha? <laughs> Let me stop. Everybody doing input, output. Of course there's an order for the Foley. The doctors are documenting it. Of course, there's an order. The charge nurse knows it's on the board. I looked through the order sheet, child. There was no order for that. (laughs) But, you know, that was something harmless. But there could be a lot of worse things. One time I walked in and I seen a patient with an injury tube, but there was no order. I'm like... Hello, I'm not taking this report, baby. You're going to have to give me your order real quick. But it's really important to check your orders. I know some places they still do it by paper. So, like, usually it's the night shift that will check the orders, do, like, a chart check. And, you know, but honestly, it doesn't matter if the night nurse is supposed to check the orders for the day. If you're working, you need to be checking your own orders, baby. You need to make sure that the orders are in. If you're taking a verbal, 
you need to make sure that the doctor puts it in. I love leaving a little love letter. Hey, doc. Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm going to need that order. Even if it's Tylenol, I don't care. Like, I'm going to need the order. Checking your orders is very important to protect your license. It is your responsibility. Just because a nurse didn't endorse it to you. Sometimes nurses, one hour before their shift, they... I'm going to just... Sometimes, you know... If an order is put in at 6.30 and the shift is over at 7, baby, it's an endorsement. But sometimes you don't have a chance to go back to the computer to check the orders. That's why it's very important to check the orders when you come on shift. Because even if something was given at like 6.35, I'm not going to hassle you to ask them to give the matter to do like an engine tube or whatever. That could be endorsed to me because the order was just placed in. And it's also like an unwritten rule in nursing that if the order is put in like an hour before your shift is ending it's on to the next person unless it's like an emergency thing like if i'm working in the emergency room honestly it don't matter what time if that order is put in at 6 40 and the patient needs an injury tube or the patient needs a foley that's not something you want to endorse in the next shift because you're in an emergency situation on message or other floors sometimes you can't endorse those things you're still wrapping up from all this other stuff you have going on it's not like so critical if that makes sense without putting down Check your orders when you come into work because honestly, that's the best thing. Do not hassle a nurse if something was put in at 6.30, 6.40 and she didn't give it. Don't be that type of nurse. Your shift is just starting and nursing is 24 hours. You can pick it up. And as you gain more experience as a nurse, you'll be able to decipher what orders are like emergency orders that you have to do now and what orders you can endorse. And also, sidebar, as a nurse, you have the right to question orders. I do it all the time. Especially if it's something that, like, I'm not agreeing with. You're at the bedside with the patient. This is when your skills and your relationship with the provider matters. Maybe the doctor puts in an order for morphine because the patient just had a surgery. But the patient doesn't want morphine. They only want Tylenol. You have a right to go to the doctor and say, hey, doc, I know you put the order in for morphine, but the patient is requesting Tylenol. You have a right to question the order. Sometimes, and this comes with experience. You could actually look at a patient and say, hey, doc, we need an order for this. Like, this is not right. This, Like, this patient ain't looking right. Can I get an order for this? But that comes with experience. So just keep it in the, you know, baby step areas, which is always check your orders. Even if you're friends with the nurse, even if y'all cool, y'all tight, she gives the best reports, etc. I missed that Foley order. And just because everybody was charting it and documenting, even the doctors, like, they missed it too. Never trust on someone else's eyes or ears or words that they're saying always check for yourself and when you get enough experience and you feel confident enough a order doesn't benefit your patient or maybe considering your patient's current status condition that they need a new order for this a substitute order a change in treatment don't be shy speak up because you're the nurse you're the advocate you went to school for this you have a license you have a brain a nurse instant is you can look at a patient when you get experience, it'd be like, mm-mm. this patient, mm-mm. Mm-mm. you know what that means. Like, I'm just not going to say it because I'll be say it on social media, YouTube, or wherever. But I don't know if this, this might be, you know. Anyways, I'm being silly. Thank you guys so much for listening, especially in my testimony because you know I'm going to spread the gospel. Any chance I get, be sure to follow me, comment, like, subscribe, share. I'm coming out with a new ebook. Hopefully, it will be out this week. I just been very busy, but I took the week off of work so that I can make it happen. And it's free. Who don't love free? Bye.